might be a Stephen West fan if you just found this podcast. I'm Shannon. I run a podcast called Sheepless Needles. Normally, it's a vegan podcast that's not about being vegan, where I talk about all sorts of fun stuff like knitting, like gaming, like bunnies, like cats, you know, life, right? Really, in reality, it's a podcast about how I try and fail to balance my hobbies. But last year, on a whim, I decided to kind of film myself doing the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along, and I had a really good time doing it. And I think it was a four or five part series that I did last year, and I noticed I got a lot more views for that than my normal podcast, which is which I loved. But I thought, I think I want to do this again this year, and we're just going to see what happens. So here's a couple things to tell you. One, there is a mystery knit along that's starting at the end of this week. Um, I think it's starting October 5th. This is how on top of things I am, and I didn't do my homework. <laughs> but anyway, it's a mystery knit along that is starting at the end of the week, and it is what you need if you're going to participate in the knit along. You will need to purchase the GeoGradient pattern drop. You can do that through Stephen West's website, I believe, and you can also do it on Ravelry, which is where I did it. So you're gonna purchase that. You're also going to need, just to start the knit along, you want four colors of yarn, fingering weight, so like 400, 430 yards per skein, in a gradient of color. You will probably wanna use or gauge with US fours, see if you land the gauge that's listed in the pattern. If you don't, size up, size down. And quite frankly, it's a shawl, it's not a sweater or a garment. So even if you don't nail gauge, you just need to make sure that if you don't nail gauge, you have enough yarn, right? So just keep that in mind. Anyway, really easy. All you need to do is download the pattern. Once a week, Stephen West will drop a clue. It will be a written out clue that has a video accompaniment to it. And what I plan to do is knit along with the video without skipping ahead to the end of the video so that I won't really know what the end of clue one is gonna look like until I reach the end of clue one. So what I typically do is throw on the video, watch the first little bit where he's like, cast on this. I'll do the cast on, I'll stop the video, I'll finish that section, I'll start the video again, he'll tell you the next couple rows, I'll do the next couple rows. That's how I approach it, because I like the surprise of it. I don't know if I'll do that this year or not. We'll find out. Uh, but what I want to do is probably drop, again, probably a four to six video series. My game plan is this. If clues are dropped on a Thursday or a Friday, I will not film about that clue or that knitting until the following weekend. So I will. my videos will post at minimum a week behind the knit along. I do that one so that I don't ruin anything for anyone who's actually knitting along with it. It may spoil it for you if you are either behind in knitting, and I don't wanna say behind, let's just say you're not knitting along with the knit along, or if you're coming into it well after the knit along, obviously it's probably already been spoiled. But I do want to put that out there that I will show my work um, at the end of the week, not before the next clue drops. So I will at least do that. So I will try to not use the word so anymore because I just noticed I was saying that a lot. I will try at the beginning of each one of the podcasts regarding the MCAL to warn about the spoilers so that you don't get something ruined for you that you don't want to get ruined. Anyway, I think it's a lot of fun. And here's the deal. If you're looking for a podcast related to this MCAL that is like knitting perfection where the knitter is uber talented and just able to answer questions for you, you can tell what they're doing by looking at it and they're just knitting with ease, I'm not your girl. <laughs> Look, I love knitting. I'm not a great perfect knitter. I make mistakes. I have fun. I frog. I tink. I use profanity. I find humor in things that other people might cry about. Um, that's my podcast. <laughs> so my journey is one of like, how many mistakes will I make that I am able to continue on and finish the MCAL? Will I like my mistakes? 
I don't know. Will I have to frog a whole section? I don't know. That's my podcast. Don't If you're looking for perfection, it ain't here. <laughs> if you're looking for someone who you can have a giggle with and commiserate with and be like, hey, it's not that serious, I am your girl. So, I have iced coffee. Hang on a second. I'm parched from all this talking. Oh, I think I put too much milk in it, you guys. It's oat milk and it's really like, I can, what, it doesn't, you don't care. Okay, so I will show you in advance my gauge swatch so you know what color palette I'm working with. I just did this last night. So this is my, oh, that is blowing out. Let me bring that back a little bit. This is my palette. Obviously, you can see the gradient. Isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? Yes. All right, all of my yarn is from Terrapin Fiberworks. I will leave it in the notes in case you want to go check out her website. Um, this is a mixture of her yarns. Some of it is from the Icelandic dye drop that she just recently had. Other of it is older and from my stash. Like the kind of cream colored is called Sweet Almond. And I've had that in my stash for probably about a year waiting for a good project to kind of blend in with it. And I think this is perfect. So again, fingering weight yarn. And what I am knitting with are my, and I will mispronounce things too, so get ready for that. Chiagu US4s. I have a 60 inch cable because I have learned with Mr. Stephen West that when he says 40 inch cable, I always need something bigger because I always do the big finish. And that will make sense to you when we hit clue four. So I would say 40 and up. I wouldn't go over a 60 inch cord, but you know, you do you. You can switch that out midway through too, so no biggie. The other thing that I do, and this is my own one and only tip because I don't feel like I should give advice. <laughs> I feel like I need to take it. I do have an emergency kit that I travel with for knitting and I try to put one in all of my project bags so inside my little emergency kit, I have extra stitch markers. Oh, extra stitch markers, because your girl makes a lot of mistakes and needs to mark a lot of stitches. And then I have needle stops. And look, it's a pumpkin. Tee -hee. Uh, oh, 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 oh. What I need to have in here is Tylenol. Didn't think about that. Uh, tapestry needle. And then I have these things that I got from Stephen and Penelope quite some time ago. And they're called, can you, oh, blowing out. I'm really sorry about the light. There we go, flocks. And they are little U's that are bendable with little bamboo needles on the end. Dudes, when you drop a stitch and you don't have a, like this thing, like my little 10, cannot fit a crochet hook, which is what I normally have to have for all the drop stitches in my life, which are many. Um, this works in the place of that for me, and it's perfect because it fits in here. And let me take one out. If you got, I'm sure somebody else makes something similar to this, so you don't necessarily need to use the Stephen West brand or the Flox brand, whatever it is. But see, you can do 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 do. You can do all, and it's it is advertised as a stitch marker, but I like to call it a stitch helper. I don't know. Anyway, that's what I put in my little emergency ten. And I like to just keep the 10 in whatever I'm keeping my project in. So like, let's say like the week that clue one drops, I need to go to the dentist. We've all been there. You sit in that waiting room, waiting to have your mouth shut up with all sorts of drugs. You get real nervous. It's always good to have knitting. Now I'm not saying you should take an all like a super complicated project with you, but I say throw caution to the wind. You only live once. Who cares if your arm flies across the dentist office floor? Not that that's happened to me before, mind you, but wink, wink. <laughs> I can't wink. Okay, so I just pack all of that in my kit so that way if I want to travel with said project, I can do that. And that's literally my only tip. And have fun. That's the biggest tip I have. Okay, if you're new here, I have bunnies and I have cats. So my how ah, sorry if this triggers anybody, but I've got a big ass hair in my eye. 
so there's usually floaties and usually there's somebody in the video with me but today Maggie has decided that she's on strike from me so she is as far away from me as she can because I had to brush her earlier not her biggest like treat of life being brushed she does not care for it so she's just giving me the cold shoulder you'll meet her eventually all right so let's get back to this I'm gonna drop probably four to six videos. They will be, try to be short. I'm gonna to try to make them, and I'm not kidding this time, 10 to 20 minutes a piece, boom, and be done. So you can go about your day, have a giggle, and be like, that girl is crazy and she can't knit. Cheers! Yes, that's gonna be what we're gonna do. So, if you're not knitting along with the knit along, I just hope you watch me maybe fail and fall on my face and have a good time doing it. If you are knitting and you need a break from the knitting, Hey, we can come hang, you can come hang out, listen to my trials and tribulations, and we'll just go from there. There are so many people who do really, really great professional grade vlogs when it comes to this MCAL. I highly suggest you just search the, it's like, I think it's the Stephen, I don't even know what they're calling it, Westnitz Geo Gradient 2023. I don't know what the tag is, I'll put it in the notes. Like I said, ill prepared for everything. Anyway, you can do a search for whatever the tag is, you will find so many vlogs, so many really, really talented knitters. And I really think you should like watch a cornucopia of people because it's so fascinating to watch different people's approach to a knit along. You know, do they stick to the time require, not requirements, but like, do they try to get it done within the confines of the listed, you know, knit along? and their color, just everything. I love watching other knitters approach it, but it's also fun to watch people who are truly professional, who breeze right through it, and you're just like, how the hell did they just do that? I have those moments every day in life, and I just, I want my vlog to be more of like, wow, I can't believe she just did that. <laughs> So you get the idea of what who I am and what my podcast is. I hope you join me. I hope we all have a really great time. In the meantime, we've got a week to pull it together. Get your shit together. Like I said, I do, well, I didn't tell you, but I do. I cuss like a sailor. I try not to. So if you've got young children, I'm warning you now, I will try not to use profanity. I will literally try. I cannot guarantee I will be successful in that. My podcast really isn't for children. I don't market in YouTube for children, so that way, if an expletive comes out of my mouth, you will not be shocked. The other thing I will tell you is I do like a beverage. So today, my beverage is non-alcoholic. It is an iced coffee. Many times, this will be alcoholic. If that triggers you, word of warning, could be included. So I just want to make sure we're upfront and honest with each other so that we have a relationship of honesty with each other. If you're gonna hang out and watch, definitely click a like, definitely click a subscribe. I rarely pimp that out. I'm gonna try it, we'll see what happens. And that's it. So I will see you guys in about a week. Once I get through clue one, wish me luck, I wish you luck. And I'll see you on the other side. Toodles!